Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Band Together Leadership Seminars. My name is Paul Everts. I'm the founder and CEO of Band Together. You can reach me at my email address, which is band, the number two gather, band together at comcast.net. You can also get me at my handsome website, which is www.conductingmylife.com, where you can buy that book, which is Conducting My Life, Life Lessons of a High School Music Teacher. I have them in my garage if you'd like any. I'm going to make this short, sweet, which means probably less than 10 minutes. On the 5th of August, I was diagnosed with COVID. Um, now, as far as I know, there's a 98, 98 point whatever percentage of uh, people that survive COVID. However, I also understand that me, who I weigh, I weighed uh, 267 pounds. Now I weigh 251 pounds. High blood pressure and such that COVID was not going to be my friend. And it was not my friend. So I diagnosed, um, I think officially either Saturday or Sunday. Um, Monday was at Kaiser, not Kaiser, sorry, Sutter uh, in Roseville. Uh, got there at 3 o'clock. Was told it would take two hours to see a doctor. Two hours. There must have been about 50 people in that waiting room. I felt like I was in an asylum of some sort. One man walking around with this long blue plastic bag that is his vomit and moaning and groaning and just people, a wreck, homeless man with toenails that were probably four inches long. And I got sick to my stomach several times in those two hours, but then they finally saw me. I walked in there with 102 temperature um, my oxygen level was below 90. So I wasn't doing all that great. Um, so they saw me, yeah, you got to take care of yourself. So I'm going to get you back home. Uh, but before that, we have to do blood tests and an x-ray for your lungs. Holy smokes, man. So that was, an, so I waited another hour or so for the blood test. Lady comes out, takes the blood. It's okay, good, almost getting home now. And then, okay, now you have to go get your x-ray for your lungs. I was, so I go in there, I think they literally took one x-ray. I said to the x-ray tech, I go, hey man, so is that about 15, 20 minutes? Oh, you'll be lucky if it's an hour. Another hour. So now I'm getting sick to my stomach because the kind of COVID I had was diarrhea and vomiting. And it hurt so much. So now it's about seven o'clock at night. So again, it's about four hours. And I called Diana. I said, yeah, Diana, you got to get me out of here. I can't handle it. I was so thirsty. I was so hungry. And I had thrown up. I had diarrhea. I was just terrible. I mean, my, my lips were chapped already. And so I felt like I was escaping from somewhere. We get home probably about 7.30ish or so, eight o'clock. Diane is on the phone with Sutter. I could tell she was frustrated. She was crying. She comes up and get your clothes on. We're going back. I said, I can't go back. I don't want to go back. You got to go back. They have this special medicine for your your nausea. And it's time so they can only make it. And we got to go now. So by the time I get there and by the time I get the IV going and stuff, it's now midnight. And then Diana and I, I called Diana and said, Diana, I'm ready. So she was in the parking garage waiting for me. Again, remember, she was waiting since 8, 8.30. So now she's been there for four hours. She comes walking down, puts her hand up in front of my face. As I say, don't say anything to me. Car battery died. So we didn't get home until 2 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning. That'd be Tuesday morning, 2 o'clock. What I'm telling you is very personal. Yet on the other hand, I'm, I, I'm getting ready to go to school tomorrow. One of the sad days I had was on the 12th of August. That would be the second day kids were at school. And I watched Field of Dreams. In my little man cave, which is where I'm at right now, on my air mattress. Uh, again, so now it's been a solid week. I've had hope, covid as I'm watching Field of Dreams, I'm crying. Uh, 
You know, I, I, I thought to myself, why are you crying watching you feel dreams? Which I do. I cry. That movie makes me sad. Well, several things. One, <clears throat> going back to a school that um, I love dearly has a new principal. She's a nice, nice lady. Um, but there's stuff happening at that school as there is probably in huge amounts of schools across the United States that hurt my heart. That uh, Field of Dreams is based on the book Shoeless Joe by Ray Kinsella. And it's a great book and I like it. And uh, I'm thinking to myself, how many kids have, will not read this book because an English teacher would think this is inappropriate now. A high school English teacher would probably say, well, see, it's so pro-America and it's one side of the story and also shows the importance of fathers. And I just I got depressed. And, I, you know, and, I, and then it was hard for me because I believe in Jesus Christ. He's my Lord, my Savior. He died on a cross for my sins. And I'm thinking to myself, man, you are so weak right now. You're crying over that. You're crying over the fact that you're going back to school where there are kids that don't have fathers to play catch with them. I didn't have a father to play catch with me. And I got very depressed, you know, and English teachers that wouldn't read that book probably because it just doesn't compute right now with today's generation and what we've done. <clears throat> this book needs to be part of your library. I want to go back to school where we are connecting with one another, where we encourage one another, and where we love one another. Right now I have, I think, what they call brain fog. My head is very dizzy. I don't feel good. But I'm going to persevere and get back on that campus tomorrow because um, my career is coming to an end. This is not my goodbye speech, but knowing what people, knowing to what teachers are saying and how they're behaving, knowing that 83% of all teachers are supposed to be um, I, they're identified as Democrat, therefore 17% identify as Republican. My heart is heavy because when I started teaching in 1989, no students knew if you were Democrat or Republican, gay or straight. That was very private information and, and, and nowadays you, you wear either as a badge of courage. So, as I close this um, less than 10 minute, which is short for me, I want to say thank you to my colleague, Alyssa, who's done just a great job helping my students get through these uh, first, oh, five days or so without their teacher. I want to thank my department. We have two new teachers, and they have been very kind to me. Again, I want to thank my principal. I want to thank, um, my, again, my students who are being nice. I don't know if you're all being nice, but those who are uh, being loving and, and concerning about my health, I appreciate it because it's bad news. COVID is no joke. <clears throat> and I want to thank my friends and uh, family members who uh, didn't lecture me, didn't tell me that it was your fault and all this other garbage. And they were just very supportive and praying for me. In fact, I had a great prayer today with a friend named Dean and I lift him up in prayer as well however I gotta give a huge huge thank you to Diana my wife and our daughter Katie who have been really really sweet to me and kind to me and loving I, I can't thank them enough they have been very patient oh. and um, reminds me of the importance of family of the nuclear family and how blessed we are in the United States of America to have the foundation of a family that we need to continue to strive to fight for. So that being said, begin with the end of mind, every choice you make is who you are. Seek first to understand and be understood and then finally people don't care how much you know and then they know how much you care. I hope I can make it through the day tomorrow, tomorrow being the 18th of August. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. If you have COVID, I'm praying hard for you. Hang in there. And if you have friends who have COVID, do all you can to be with them because it's a very lonely experience and it's very scary at times. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye.